Yes, welcome everybody. And today uh, we have a very distinguished guest. In fact, I was saying and sharing with him that I did not know I was in the presence of such a visionary. <laughs> and it's the developer of the Haya project, um, Fernando Vosa. Welcome. Fernando. Thank you, Alfred. I am honored to also be sharing once again with our audience, the entire exopolitical television watching audience, plus all of these amazing people that are coming to the forefront now. You know, you and I have been doing this for quite a while now, but so many people are awakening now to the possibilities. And, and 2014 is that kind of year to manifest something physical that we can all understand, right? Exactly. We're, we're in the year of the Yang Green Wooden Horse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a combination. I was born as a wooden dragon. Oh, you were? The year of the dragon, yes. Oh, good. Well, I'm, I'm a water horse, so I'm humbly here to, to, to support your Yang, wow. your Yang Fire Project in this year of the wooden horse. So burn it up here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I contacted you recently about the Haya project. Yeah. Uh, since the beginning of this year, uh, I wanted to create a working model of a sustainable home that integrated free energy, but also the whole concept of healing technology. And when you talk to architects or some of the people who are into natural home building, we haven't quite integrated the language of what healing is about. And you know that I've been sharing this vision of creating free energy technology that also heals your body. So I thought it would be interesting to take this research I've been doing for the past few years and show how we can consider healing as part of the design process of a home. Many people through the next few years are going to be looking at sustainability, right? And right now that's the most radical thing that we can do. The act of becoming independent, growing your own food, producing your own energy, and taking responsibility for your own wellness, your well-being, those are the steps that are going to liberate this planet. It is that important, right? Yes, yes. And and I and I really like the 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 whole concept of one's home as a sacred site, as a functioning sacred healing site. So could you walk us through that? We have a couple of different things to look at here. First is the concept of sustainability. What does it mean to be sustainable? And we're very well aware of the whole concept of being sustainable, sustainable at the physical level, the food, the water, the energy, and being able to live in a home that is symbiotic with nature. That's that physical level. We move up into the mental, emotional level. What does it mean to be mentally sustainable? Are we sustainable mentally and emotionally in our everyday lives? Are the way we see reality, the way we deal with stress, our belief systems, are they sustainable? And then our spiritual sustainability. When we start making that quest or truth of answering the questions, who am I? What am I? What is my purpose here on the planet? How about taking that journey, those shifts, and putting them into a design process? As with all my other projects, I start out by defining the result of the project. What is the experience of the art that I'm creating? I wanted to build a team that could answer the question, could we design a home and build it? That is at a price point that's very accessible, that could be replicated around the world. Imagine a house that heals your body and rejuvenates you to the point where every day you spend in this home, your body is rejuvenating one entire day. How do we integrate technology into the home, into the walls, into the architecture, so that we have a whole new set of options for you and your family, right? So part of this is looking at the different systems that we understand in a house. And I researched the Earthship technology heavily, uh, Michael Reynolds technology, 
which to me is some of the best examples out there of sustainability. I also researched the CalEarth Echo Domes. I went in several countries to look at Echo Villages. Uh, when I, we were in South Africa a couple of years ago, I went to visit several Echo Villages. And then I tapped into that community that we've built, the free energy group, the healers out there, the whistleblowers, and started probing what kind of technology is available to us that we can put right away into a home. So many of the people on the Hyatt team, like William Brown from the Resonance Project, Michael Reynolds, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Michael Tellinger, uh, with his immense body of knowledge into ancient technology, people like uh, the Searle Technology, uh, Jason Verbelli, uh, Daniel and Erica Nunes with their vortex coils. When you start talking to these individuals about what's possible, I mean, my mind blew up. <laughs> and I said, we have to do this. We have to integrate and build this. Good. Now, now, uh, so, so you're getting this project started in Baja California, which is where, where you're talking, you're, you're speaking to us from, from, from Baja California now, right? That's correct. I am about 30 minutes south of San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why are you locating this new project? And, by the way, what does Haya, I, it rhymes with Gaia, what does Haya stand for? It's an acronym. It stands for Healing Art Installation as Home. Very good. And it goes the other way around, too. Home as install art, Installation Art Healing. It, it goes both ways. Brilliant. The idea is to, to have a platform that allows us to ask a different set of questions about building a home. Don't take any assumptions about what is a kitchen or what is a bathroom or a bedroom and the functionality of a home as, as a shelter. Baja California, it's this beautiful strip of land off the coast of, of the U.S. and Mexico. And the connection, the physical connection is the border between the U.S. and Mexico. And we all know that Tijuana is an intense place of energy where we have this intersection of cultures, the intersection of belief systems and currencies and so forth. It's the busiest border on the planet. Over a quarter million cars cross it every day. It is no mistake that there are ley lines here. And you've seen in Michael Tellinger's grids of the vortex energy points on the planet, Baja California sits on one of those. Mm. We consider it here like the wild west of, of this part of the world. If somebody tries to be sustainable right now in the U.S., the amount of laws and building codes and permits that you have to get make it almost impossible to, to be off the grid, as, as we call it, right? In Baja California, we have large tracts of land. This area is 75% unexplored territory. There are entire valleys and mountains that are virgin. Energetically, also, people have a different sense when they come to Baja. You know, Baja used to be the party place to come and drink as a teenager, or it used to be the place to do your tour down all the way to Los Cabos through the desert. So a lot, many Americans are familiar with Baja California as that escape. We can get cheaper land here, less expensive. We can get less expensive labor to help us build, and materials are less expensive. Plus, if you have a property out here, you're pretty much going to be left alone. That's why we did Baja California. Yeah, and and um, I I've been uh, 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 dealing with also the the uh, paradox of the attempted U.S. invasion of Mexico through the quote drug wars, which was actually set up by the city of London Dope Inc. Could you talk to us about how that may have impacted the area that you now want to bring a future positive healing arts design home project to. <laughs> Without going too deep right now, and, and you know we're both fans of the, of the control structure side, the conspiracy side, which to me is the truth yeah. side of this story. Politically, 
Baja California is a very sensitive site uh, because of that. The, the amount of drug traffic that the U.S. secures from Mexican drug lords, let's just get this out in the open. There's a business. Yeah. It's a billion-dollar business of weapons, people, and drug trafficking. Yeah. yeah. Human trafficking is alive and well in Baja California and in the U.S. side, both children and adults and slave labor. Let's just get this out in the open. Yeah. Because we have to call these things for what they are fearlessly. Yeah. The, uh, the, the several of the three-letter agencies in the U.S., the, the DEA, the Homeland Security, the border, uh, people in charge of the border, are fronts organizations for money trafficking, people trafficking, and weapons. Right. That's caused a very difficult situation here in Mexico because of the NAFTA agreement that the U.S. forcefully put on the people of Canada and Mexico. Correct. It's, it's, a, it's a recipe for disaster for here. Yeah. That means the, the economic wealth is sucked out of this region because it is not in the interest of America to have a, a, a successful Mexico or a successful Canada that right. is independent from the energy systems, from the pharmaceutical systems. Here in, in, in Tijuana, it's, it's very popular to come and buy your pharmaceutical drugs. You can buy steroids, you can buy antibiotics, Viagra, without uh, uh, a medical receipt or a chemist right. uh, prescription. Yeah. Within that, we have a population here that could be sustainable. Baja California has the natural resources of ocean, of farming, and solar energy possibilities that would be unlimited. We also have skilled labor here with the maquiladora factories. These are the places where people assemble cars and all right. kinds of, of, of electronic goods are, are Sanyo and Hyundai and other Volkswagen are here in Mexico. So many countries move their operations of assembly and manufacturing here. The vision is to bring free energy technology to Baja California and be able to mass manufacture free energy devices for the rest of the world right here. We have a power clash of cabal families here in Mexico and the U.S. where the drug lords are fighting with the electronics and the landowners and the government that's been in place for who knows how long. What I'm really interested in is how do we begin liberating the thought process of people who live here to the point where we can create eco-tourism, spiritual tourism, and an option for Mexican people to come back to Mexico because it would be coming back to a place of abundance. Right. So many people wouldn't be killed trying to cross the border if they had options right here. Right. You know, my experience of living here on the border is that the American border was designed to keep people in the U.S., not the other way around. We think all those walls that Obama and the Bush administration have built here, they're for the Mexicans not to cross. It's the other way around. Yeah, the yeah. most dangerous idea in Mexico is sustainability. It is even more dangerous than in the U.S. because it's very possible here. Yeah, you know, and my understanding is that utopian projects have have had a very special place in Mexico. And there have been many migrations of Americans with a utopian vision that have gone to Mexico with their small settlements to live out and to give rise to these various utopian projects. So this is it within an historical tradition, I think. Uh, the the Haya project is very much within an historical tradition of of projects going to Mexico, wouldn't you say? Mexico is very well versed in the tourist industry, creating some of the most interesting resorts on the planet. You know, regions like Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta, Cancun. We also have a huge uh, medical industry here, pharmaceuticals and medical uh, procedures. Many people come to this area to have some kind of surgery done and recover and then go back to the U.S. 
like dentistry and you know surgery. What's interesting within that that entire world is that Mexico runs on monopolies. We have an oil monopoly here with Pemex. We have an electric a utility monopoly with the CFAA, which is called the Commission of the Federal Commission of Electricity. The water is heavily regulated in Mexico. The laws are such that if you try to drill a well here, you have to have that well regulated. If you try to collect rainwater, there are certain rules. Isn't it ridiculous that the entire country runs on monopolies that don't favor the people? That means that the oil interest here in Mexico, like Pemex, has not invested in the community. Here in Rosarito, Mexico, where I live, Pemex has a huge facility right on the water, and they own these pipes, and there's dead seals washing up on the beaches. Pemex has not invested in our community here. I haven't seen Pemex or the Electric Commission or the Water Commission invest in parks, in some kind of uh, health benefits to the community, right. or... Now we have the infusion of Walmart and Home Depot and other Costco. Where are the contributions of those monsters that have come here to the community? So what we're saying in the Haya Project is that every structure that we build, whether it's a house, a mall, a baseball stadium, whatever we build, should have built into it free energy for the community. Right clean water for the community, and food for the community. Alfred, how radical is that thinking that if we had Walmarts that fed the neighborhood, if we had Costcos that provided electricity for the neighborhood, wouldn't that just completely change the way we develop real estate? Yeah, yeah. Y you know, and, and, now that I, and now that I think of it, I'm familiar with and, and have, you know, friends who, who live in retirement villages in Baja. Mm -hmm. These are Americans who've moved to Baja to retirement villages. I guess that they're sort of walled, you know, with, with walled, uh, gated communities right. with houses. And so what you're saying is let's create a... Uh, a, a new reality of what you call bioarchitecture there. Right. Uh, uh, for the conscious community that would like to embed sacred architecture and healing in its housing, and that Baja California is ideal for this. And in fact, you already have a lot of retirement villages there. Is that more or less what you're saying? Yes, and, and the, the inspiration for the higher project is also selfish interest. I want a house that has these things in it. Yeah. I have seen what's possible in free energy and in healing. And what you mentioned about the bioarchitecture and the sacred geometry, Yeah. part of the approach that, that we've taken here is studied nature in, in very specific sites, pieces of land that we are looking to, to put the, the location. And the site we're, we're building is called Vosa Nation, kind uh -huh. of like the New Earth Project. We want to eventually be a sovereign nation oh. of, of free thinkers who have technology. Uh, imagine the vision of having free sovereign nations that may be distributed in different parts of the world, but that have access to free energy technology, healing technology, and also an integration of sustainability. Imagine if the, if the nation of Tibet had access to free energy, if the Ubuntu movement in, in Africa had access to free energy uh, and be, building homes that are sustainable, suddenly they would become an economic power, a political force to reckon with, don't you think? Oh, because we yeah. have this corrupted thinking that we have to have borders for nations, that they have to have land and regions, and that's all been controlled you know this. It's right. been systematically implemented that we need borders. To me, when I cross the border between the U.S. and Mexico and back, it is a ridiculous act for me because I am a, 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 a part of this earth. And to me, these arbitrary lines that we've drawn are ancient technology in themselves. They serve no purpose for me anymore. Now, 
What if we learned from nature how to build? This is what we're doing with Haya. We've selected a particular kind of cactus that grows in this region, the barrel cactus. It's like a fat, round shape that has these wedges on the outside. And these cactus create microclimates on their surface. Mm. So when the sun hits it, or the cold weather hits it, or the dry weather, it has a way of breaking up the light and dark areas by use of fractal geometry. Mm. It divides and conquers the environment it lives in. How can we have houses that do that, is what I'm asking. Could mm. we have a house that is designed so intelligently that the house is self-sustaining just by the shape of it, not to mention the materials you make it out of, and then all the considerations that go inside. What a great start, no? Yeah, so that's what you call biomimicry. In other words, designing your houses around fractal principles. That's right, that the same principles mimic, your body is designed around. Yeah, that mimic the intelligence of the cactus. Is that is that what you're saying? That's right. And many of the researchers that we, inter we both interact with already have tapped into that knowledge. The knowledge that nature is giving us these answers for free. You want to talk about free energy, free design principles that come from biomimicry teach us that we can have a structure that generates its own electricity wirelessly but tunes your body to the Schumann resonance of the earth. So imagine a house as you're walking in through the front door, you go through a kind of a stargate shape that has crystals embedded in it. And what it is, is it's a type of mechanism to decontaminate your body chemically and energetically from the outside world, even before you go into your Haya, your structure. When your body is tuned to the Schumann resonance, and it, it has to be generated from the earth, it can't just be some figure somebody calculated, suddenly your heart rate starts balancing. Your metabolism it starts actually going faster. And what we want to do is, is be able to send at the, DNA, at the DNA level to your body the instruction set for rejuvenation. So the new cells that are being produced inside the marrow in your bones start following a code that says this individual wants to slow down the aging process, wants to reharmonize any cancer state, any immune deficiency, or any results of damage from stress. Isn't this the language architects should have when they build homes? That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I'll so give you some examples of fun technology, just as a peek. One of the things that we're talking about is embedding fiber optic lines in the wall. And these are walls that are about a foot to a foot and a half thick that are filled with foaming clay instead of insulation. This is a kind of mixture made out of earth and some, some natural foaming agents that expand that, that material and then it hardens and it turns into a, an energetic and a sound and temperature barrier for the house. The fiber optic cable would be able to give low frequency light, not low frequency, low power light, like when you take a little fiber optic and look at it, it's got that little light coming out of it, but you could also add color filters to it and sound to it. So imagine if we design appliances that run on color, sound, and light. So if you're in your kitchen and you wanted to juice your vegetables in your vertical medicinal garden inside your kitchen, you can expose your juice and treat it, structure it with certain sound frequencies, certain color frequencies and light. So by the time you consume it, it acts as a homeopathic tincture that starts working in your body to rejuvenate it, to heal it, to energize it. When you take a bath and be able to do that in structured water and expose your body to a rainbow of color and sound, you can tune your bath 
to different intentions. So if you're an athlete, you want super performance, you can do that. If you are a senior and you want to reinvigorate your body so you can replace the cartilage in your joints or you can bring down rheumatoid arthritic pain, you can do that with color, sound, and light. How, how's that? That's just for beginnings. Yeah, so so the, the people that you're really looking for are very conscious, conscious consumers or conscious people because it seems like you would have to go through a training course <laughs> before <laughs> well, imagine coming into the house. house yeah. That your family comes into. And by the way, it is a work of art. Yeah. That's what this whole thing is. It is a work of technological art. You get a kit, like in a box, with different tools that your family can play with, uh, kind of like a game. And the tools would be crystals, magnets, different lenses to channel light, color filters, and sound transducers. So your kids could take, mix and match these things. Maybe they want to mix a crystal with some kind of water and see how it affects your awareness, your emotions. If your kids want to experiment with gardening and being able to grow plants that grow faster and more nutritious, or if they want to go more advanced and play with mental telepathy, to connect with dolphins, if you wanted to learn how to astral travel, the house is an instrument that amplifies consciousness. So if a family doesn't have any knowledge of any of this, they can start discovering it just by this, this kit. But if a family comes in and has some training, they can start teaching their kids how to use the internet, not the internet. So you don't the really internet. need electronics or a plasma display in this house because you can train yourself to communicate with other star nations or with other people around the world and download and upload information just like a crystal. What do you think? Is that a whole different option or what? Oh, yeah. No, I think that it's, that it's very important now. Um, for example, uh, uh, I don't know how the house would... One of the options that I find, or I think is very important uh, uh, a, as an option, is far infrared. Uh, and that is because of the free radicals that are in, in the atmosphere now, uh, because of all of the radiation that is cumulative uh, from uh, <clears throat> nuclear testing, from the depleted the depleted uranium wars from the nuclear power plants in, in including Fukushima. And that's just part of our of our atmosphere. So uh, uh, having a house that in fact uh, is, you know, say if you can install something like far infrared or its equivalent that would deconstruct the effects of the free radicals, uh, then uh, you're, co you're constantly, uh, you know, this is a necessity. I know, but well, the, yeah. The, uh, the idea is to work with natural systems yeah. that are self-organizing. That okay. means the intelligence of how these shapes deal with energy, whether it's good or bad energy, it's, a, it's tapping into natural law, an understanding of how nature functions. So I've had conversations with Daniel Nunes about how to build the house as a torus shape. Ah. So you're living inside a vortex coil, a vortex torus. I see. The center of the torus, it's like a donut, would be a space where you could have a garden, but no, not people, because it is kind of a neutral space where harp signals, uh, radio waves, cell phone tower, all of that energy would be going around a field from the top of your house to the center and down to the ground. That means your house is an organ generation device, but it also is a natural force field to these negative energies. If you ever spent any time in, in caves, you have that sense of being in a neutral space, right? So 
in different parts of this toroid shape, you could place the kitchen and the bathroom and the bedrooms and so forth because you are channeling energy and there are certain areas in the house that are appropriate for meditation and yoga or appropriate for lucid dreaming or appropriate for creativity. And I, this house, these shapes that we're talking about, would kind of look low-tech to people. They would probably look more like uh, tribal homes in, you know, from ancient tribes, the Zulu, the Dogon, the other places that I've visited in Africa, because they know how to work with these natural toroid round shapes, right? But the technology goes back as far as the Michael Tellinger Adams calendar resonating crystals technology. Isn't it time we start playing with some of that? So, so what you're saying, so, so you're, you're incorporating all that we know from the last 280,000 years, or all that's available, <laughs> optimally, uh, into, uh, into a dwelling. Yes, and, and those of us who've taken the time to study what was available to us in Lemuria, or in Atlantis, or in ancient Egypt, or the Incas, or in South Africa, these places that we've all been to and interacted with people like Hugh Newman and Wayne Herschel and those other researchers, uh, Von Daniken and Klaus Donna, imagine asking them how they would design a house, knowing what they know. This is the approach we're taking. The Graham Hancocks of the world, the uh, David Wilcox, they have intimate knowledge of how to do this. Now, let's... let's um, uh Let's go from the area of free energy to the area of healing. Uh, uh, how do you envision a healing home? The, and to me, by the way, the understanding of healing and free energy is the same thing. I don't, it's not a separation to me. Mm -hmm. I don't have electricity over here and light over here and heat and then healing somewhere else. All of it should be healing technology. What is our definition of healing? You know, in the Western sense, we have, a, we have an idea that anytime something is wrong, you have to go visit some person in a white robe in some building called a hospital or clinic to tell you what's wrong with your body. You have to go somewhere else to find that out. Why don't we have a communication system with our own bodies so we can communicate and say something is wrong? Here are the suggested principles. It, when you interact with people like Dr. Bruce Lipton, you learn that our bodies have an intelligent field of energy around it. You know, it could be described as the Merkaba, Chi energy, Prana, whatever it is, that whatever the tradition is, whether it's herbal healing from China or Ayurvedic medicine in India, all of them agree on various things. One is that our body is a lot smarter than our brain. We have a field of intelligence around us that keeps us alive and it keeps us evolving. Why don't we tap into that field of energy and intelligence whenever we have a problem or we, when we want to have an intention of healing and work with that before you go and pump yourself up full of drugs or have some kind of needless surgery or try to go have a measurement done in an, in an MRI or in, an, in, in one, any of those intrusive methods that a lot of times are wrong. There are more women being diagnosed with breast cancer, more individuals being diagnosed with prostate cancer than it actually is happening. There's a lot of needless surgery going on. What if there was a more natural way to go about preventive medicine? But not only the kind that prevents physical injury, but also mental and spiritual. Because the other thing many of these traditions agree on is that the disease, corruption, and cancer happens energetically in the field around you first before it comes out in your body, right? We have an opportunity to be part of our own health in, in the home, homes that we, we live in. Your, your food should be your medicine. Your house should be your hospital. But it's not about being sick or not sick. It's about having access to creativity, to inspiration, to human performance. That's what we're trying to get at with Haya. 
Right, right. Now, um, uh, so I, I'm getting into it so far that I'm well, into healing one, right now. One, one example of the approach we took. Imagine if you could design your home as a ship that transports you and your family from one age of humanity into a new age of humanity. And that journey may take a year or 10 years. I don't know how long it's going to take for the world to get it together. But during that time, what transformation would you like to go through? If you were in full faith and belief that the world was evolving in one generation, which I am, I, I strongly believe that is my truth. I want to prepare for that shift. I, I'm going to be 50 this year. So I'm ready for my body to enter a, a whole new level of wellness that I've never experienced with all the knowledge that I have. And in a few years, when we have the new political campaigns and we have the new power bases and we have a, a hopefully a reset money system, Physically, I want myself and my family to be ready for that, right? That's what this ship, a higher structure, is a transporter of sorts. But it works a little bit slower than an instant transporter. And that's a whole different way of, of approaching a home design, isn't it? Well, you're, you're, you're creating a vehicle for the dimensional ecology, for actually navigating through the densities from the upper third and lower fourth density to the middle fourth. Exactly. Or, or the, it's an instrument. Or, yeah. You, you yeah. said it right there. Yeah. So so uh, let's let's get more into the into the thing. How let let's say that you have a family with children and pets. How are the children involved in healing, for for example? One of the first shifts that we go through in, in the more esoteric community the, the new agers or whatever we call ourselves, is the understanding that souls incarnate on this planet and can do it in parallel in different time-space continuums. Some people would describe that as past lives or future lives. What if you use this knowledge and recognize that your kids could be old souls that are far wiser and more advanced than you? What if our evolutionary path is that we, there's not a competition. It has nothing to do with physical age. What if your kids were young ascended masters who came to this planet to help liberate what we're working on, to bring that energy in? How do you first remind your kids of who and what they are? Remind your kids from day one that they are infinite beings of love and light. And there's nothing that could happen to them on this earth that can intervene with who and what they are. I was never told directly when I was a child that I was an infinite being of love and light. And if I would have had that self-realization from day one, I think it would have been a different game. The second level is the, the innocence of children, the innocent consciousness of being open to teaching is what adults have to connect with again. I want to be at a level of innocence, so I'm open to learn this new way of being, this shift in frequency. Because we are aware that so many things are happening, happening cosmically. The comet Ison and the solar flares and the shift of the solar poles and the Earth's magnetic traveling of, of its own fields and the ocean currents changing and so forth. Is there anything in today's homes that is helping us monitor and be part of that and to amplify it for us? Right now we live in homes that amplify television signals and radio signals and, you know, your internet wireless and who knows what other bombardment. Our homes should be instruments to study like a cosmological instrument to, to connect with more what we are. The second part of this whole thing with the family is the creativity. When I walk into a traditional home right now, the first thing I see is a plasma display, a big stereo system, 
very little art, if any, in the walls, and very little, if any, books. Have you noticed that today in today's homes? It all revolves around the computer and, and the plasma display. In all these homes that have their little cable satellite on the outside, the reality is that we're amplifying the control message that's coming from mass media. We are slaves to that system because there's nothing else in our homes that amplifies what's here in our heart, that amplifies what's here in our third eye of vision. That's the new approach of the higher project, to create that instrument to amplify consciousness. <laughs> right. Now, walk us through the house. For for example, walk us through the, the a kitchen. What 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 role does the, the hearth and the kitchen and the food and preparation have? When looking at this this lifestyle, and by the way, it is an art installation. It is a kind of experiment. This is an echo laboratory, so we can start playing with these ideas in the physical. I talked a little bit about the decontamination process when you first go into your home. So you don't carry with you the stress from your job the issues of what your body's been exposed to while you're driving, while you're eating in restaurants, and while you are in a, in a system. When you're outside of your home, you're part of, a, of the matrix. There's just no way around it. But when you're in your home, the idea is to have a neutral space. One of the things that happens is that the, the, the shape of the house itself the geometry of the fractal ridges balances with you, kind of like when you see pictures of the flower of life design that we, we, we cover so much in, in spirituality, or all those sacred geometries that we know about uh, that resonate with our system. All we have to do is look at them and, and we know we're looking at information that reaches us deeper. If a family decides to build a healing home, They've already made the commitment and the decision to be awakened in consciousness. There is this area of the living room and the kitchen and the bathroom where in the walls are hidden appliances that you can pull out and reconfigure that space. Because I want this house to also be financially sustainable. You should be able to run your business, your conscious business, from these homes. So if you have people over and you want to do a business presentation, the house has appliances built into it to give you the video presentation, to be able to communicate your design live. This is things that are built into the home. But then you can reconfigure it to be a social space of creativity with art and uh, the idea of using nature not only in paint and in drawing and in puzzles and whatever you're doing, but you can start playing with these tools that come with the house. So if you have the fiber optic connection on the wall and you plug in a laser and then you point that laser to one of the interior dome walls, you will see a like a prism effect, a rainbow, and you're looking at a chakra system. You're actually looking at the fingerprint of the light coming into that home at that particular moment. If you were to take that rainbow of light that's inside the indoor of your dome and point it toward the visitors, the people coming into your home, they're going to think, wow, I have this art, sound, and light installation. Your brain is going to start thinking differently about where you are. The entire process in your kitchen should be about having your fresh fruit and vegetables stay alive and nurturing as long as possible. When you go to a supermarket, you have the vegetables in these nice racks that have water and light and air circulating, right? We don't have that at home. What we do is we take our vegetables and throw them in the refrigerator and they turn to slime. That's what happens. I want to have a place in my kitchen that not only allows me to have fruit and vegetables stay healthy, but they actually get more nutritious inside your house. Well, all, all, yeah, yeah. Also, you could have live food. Your vertical uh, gardens mean, and so yeah, forth. Yeah, and uh, sprouts and things that you're growing. Exactly. But when you incorporate crystals and magnetic fields and sound 
into that mix. You could set up your, when you cook a salad or something for your family, the dishes, there will also be certain crystals with certain intentions, like the intention of healing or make sure Johnny does his homework and put that inside a crystal and put it right next to the food that he's eating. So the food is imprinted with the intention of what the parents are wishing for their kids. Yeah. There are many processes, and I've learned some of these from the Anastasia books, of how to imprint your DNA on your food by sucking on your seeds. You put them in your mouth, under your tongue, and they get imprinted with the DNA signature of your body. Yeah. So by the time you plant these vegetables, they grow to reflect you and your DNA. Yeah. Imagine having food that is energetically imprinted to be a, an extension of your body. Now we're playing with some fun technology, right? Yeah, no, no, sure. Uh, aspects of this sound very much like a mystery school, you know, like a temple. <laughs> Thank you. That, exactly. yeah, no, yeah, this yeah. is an open mystery school for you to discover. Yeah, no, no, right. And, and so uh, it sounds very advanced. I mean, uh, for, for uh, 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 so the, but, but the house itself would, would have a base level of technology that a human could access whatever their personal state of development and knowledge, right? That, that is true. And this isn't the kind of, it's not a laboratory full of cables everywhere and appliances and electronics. This is working with nature. The ingredients that we're playing with are natural stone and, and the uh, different ways of using water and life inside your house with the, all the botanical aspects of the house, but also the use of crystals and magnetic fields and sound into everything. Crystals will be embedded in, in appliances in the bathroom, and there'll be crystals in your kitchen and in your living room and in your bedroom. Because in the bedroom, you can tune your bedroom to be a sensual aphrodisiac space for that couple, where a house can become a way to inspire a couple to interact sensually or lovingly with each other. Because the art itself, it's like staring at a painting, like one of these paintings behind me. You can't look at this painting and be neutral. You can't just look at it and say, oh, when people stand in front of my artwork and see the geometry and the frequencies, and I have 3D glasses that you can put on while you look at my artwork, you see the separation of energy, and there's layers to it. I have had thousands of people look at my artwork and experience it and put their hands over it, and you feel the buzz on the tips of your fingers from everything that I create because it has that technology in it. It's passive. It does, there's nothing moving, there's no moving parts. So imagine you take one of these paintings with a knowledge that went into it and you turn it into a three-dimensional sculpture. You step into an Atlantean temple of rejuvenation, a Pleiadian site for replenishing your DNA and a Garthen example of rejuvenating our pineal gland. That's what I want to play with using the fractal technology of the cactus. Exactly. Nature <laughs> gives it to us for free. I didn't have to invent anything. Yeah. Now, let's, let's bring this around to the, the, the ground. <laughs> and, 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 and it's not that we're in 3D, because obviously this is, this is we're, we're create as you say, we're, we're creating a vessel, a house, that is navigating, say, from upper 3D through lower 3D through mid 3D, which is the envisioned trajectory of the next years through 2025, for example. So uh, how, how real is this? What's the best way that people can participate in this? Well, uh, we've just launched an a, a Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign for the Haya project. And, and you can just go to indiegogo.com and look up Haya, H-A-I-A-H, or there'll be a link below this video for sure with our press release. 
There are individuals who want to see this technology exist so they can touch it. Because the same thing that happens in free energy will happen here. How many times have you heard, I want to see the free energy prototype, right? But very few people will say, I want to help make that prototype happen. That's the shift I'm trying to make here. Because we are part of so many researchers out there with prototypes that are half finished, they need more funding and so forth. The same thing here. I would like to build the prototype Haya home as a collaboration of individuals who want one of these. So people can contribute 24 or $96. And by the way, these are frequencies of 12 throughout the whole campaign. Or you can put a deposit down to have our architectural team design a Haya home for you. And we're only offering three of these for this year. Uh, that's as much as we can do. The other part is that there will be many spin-off technologies. We'll be able to take some of the things that we'll do in the kitchen or the bedroom or whatever to take it to your existing home because many people are all homeowners already. So this, this is the second part of the Hyatt project. Build one full integrated system that people can experience and then spin those off for solutions. So when I go back to Africa or go back to South America or other places, I have something of value. And Alfred, if we were to put all of the fancy technology we just talked about aside and just concentrate on free energy and the healing aspect, you don't have to explain the rest. Just like art, I don't have to explain it. People can experience it. But right now, Alfred, how valuable is it to have a home that generates its own energy? To me, that is invaluable. It has no price. So, so tell me this: the, if 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 people would, would come to you and say, "Yeah, I I want you to develop and build for me uh, a a higher home," what would that home have? What we would do in the first phase of that offering is we select one site, a lot in the in in the Vosa Nation property that we're looking at and build for them a sample home. That means they have to physically come to Baja California to be in their home. We're not quite ready to do this outside of Baja yet because we haven't even built the first one yet. So we need to answer that question. What they would get is uh, with their deposit, first they get the front row seat to the Haya team. That means people would be able to interact with me and some of the other researchers to teach them what's coming. So part of the higher process is to practice the healing modalities on ourselves. Uh, we've assembled some of these prototypes and we play with them on our own bodies, the crystals, the energy. And you've seen the, the sonic Reiki technology, which is in video on our, high, on our campaign site. The second part of this is that it's about community. People are looking for like-minded individuals so they can live near them. I want to live in a neighborhood of people that think like me a little bit. So I could have uh, technology and solutions that the, the rest of the community already gets. There's not that much explaining to do. There are people right now sitting with cancer uh, who also are having all kinds of issues. And they're young. They're in their 30s with these problems. This is, this is not appropriate for me. Those individuals who want to start healing young can do it with the Haya project. The other aspect of this is the options that people can build businesses around their Haya home. If you want to create a tourist destination with the Haya technology, if you want to create an orphanage or a hospital or a senior center, why not make them sustainable and healing too? As you said, there's a lot of retiring Americans and Canadians that live here, but we don't have that many senior centers here in Baja. It's very limited. And, and so uh, what, what is going to happen now? I mean, from, 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 from here on? The Haya campaign has been out for two weeks. It has 28 days left, rough less than a month. We haven't raised the amount of money needed to go to the first phase of the higher project. What I'm going to do is, is go ahead and be patient and play out the rest of this month with the higher project being public. 
if I don't see the response, if I don't see people saying, Fernando, I like your project, I'm going to put in $100 to make it happen, um, we're going to make this project private. Uh, we're going to privately fund it and keep the information to ourselves for a while. Because the participation is important for me. This is my test in the water for the, a larger population to say, we want this. If I had a website that was selling Super Bowl tickets, which, which were selling for two to $4,000 each, and they were sold out. If people don't respond in that way, then I guess what we're bringing to the table is not right yet. And, and it's been difficult for me to deal with this. I have had about 2,000 views on the highest site since we started it. We've had four people contribute, including my girlfriend. That's it. That is very discouraging. So without feeling bad about it, I'll just take the project, close it, and keep it private for a while. Maybe next year, maybe the world will be wanting to contribute a year later. What do you think about it? And maybe crowdfunding is not the right platform for this project. Well, well, look, let, let's uh, let, let's not. <laughs> There's a lot in there. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Let's not. Let's let's take crowdfunding and put it over here, okay? Because I've had UFO projects who were on Indiegogo, where they raised fifteen thousand dollars, and Indiegogo suddenly. Whoosh, disappeared ah, yes, their money. Yes, yes. Okay? So the same there's funny stuff. Warning. Sorry? It's a good warning and I, I Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So uh uh as soon as one goes into those things, you know, uh there's matrix games going on at all levels of the matrix. <laughs> yeah. As as you would expect. I think that 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 the interest here is really on the substance of your vision and and uh, and the concept which is the 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 home as an energy and healing and sacred uh bio entity <laughs> and that i think is a is a fundamentally solid um uh concept and and so uh, uh i i was not really asking about this this particular uh the campaign thing. itself yeah yeah on on i understand on, uh, on uh, Indiegogo. And, and i've gone back and forth on this uh as yeah. as many of the free energy researchers are going through right now because most of the people I interact with don't have the funds. The Breakthrough Energy Movement doesn't have the funds to have their own campaign. Yeah. Uh, it's been tough for us to be patient yeah. Yeah. and open <clears throat> with our projects. Uh, and I'm putting this on the table, not just for my project, but for the viewing audience yeah. to really consider <clears throat> how much they are committed to support what we're doing. Yeah. Not just me, but yeah. Free Energy in, in well, well, when let's we say with yeah, no, 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 right. So, so as a fellow visionary, you know that that we are, we are. I I like to call it we are dimension walkers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's so, a good point. part of it is we're walking the dimensions, and our conversation may be a bit up in the mid fourth dimension now and the matrix is start we just back. dropped down to two and a half d just now with the money yeah 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 so it, it's so the thing is just <coughs> that's part of calibration but mm -hmm. but let me ask you uh and and there are many ways to to get to get this manifest this basic concept manifest uh, and so, I think that that the that the uh, that the concept itself is is really an amazing an amazing concept. Uh, wh when you said that you had, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to get some water. Okay. When when you had. Uh, Super Bowl tickets for two to two thousand dollars <laughs> each. What 
Were you making some kind of a point or something? That was my ego coming out for a minute there. Um, it, and and it's, it's one of those areas that we all have to navigate when we are planetary liberators to a planet that doesn't necessarily want to be liberated from the top, <laughs> right? Um, how much of our knowledge and wisdom do we share is the first question. Um, and when you are wanting to bring forward disruptive technology, just like we've had conversations about teleportation and time control and so forth, not to mention free energy, how much of that technology is appropriate for the now versus five or 10 years from now? With the higher project, maybe I jump forward a, a little bit, but I'm asking the question, what is possible in 2014? My experience and my research shows that all of the technologies we want to use in the Haya project are already up and running in many different places. Yeah. Well, we're, all we're doing is integrating. Yeah, we're yeah. also showing a system that could disrupt the entire real estate industry, the entire construction industry, the entire power system, the utilities, and food market. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Now, That's how disruptive then, this concept could be. No, 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 right. And... Uh, and so I would say that uh, maybe the crowdfunding option is not is not the particular option, you know, and that there that that there are many ways to to make this this happen as far as a practical uh, a practical project. Um, right. And I'm very open to learning because. When those of us who are researchers and investigators are pulled away from our work to go raise money, mm -hmm. uh, it's not always the best use of our of our resources or our, of our capabilities. You know, I'm not a financial planner, and I'm not a real estate. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't you don't necessarily ha have to go to money people. You can go to companies that make innovative housing. That's all. That's a, that's a good and and part of the higher project was to put that light beacon out there and seeing what stuck what for for that first yeah part. yeah yeah, yeah. For, I would like to change for the example, strategy no 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 right for for example I think I sent it to you earlier and this is not at all in the realm of what you're doing but IKEA is now selling a house in a kit that costs six thousand pounds. I thought that was brilliant. I, yeah, I did see yeah, yeah. So, house. yeah. So, uh, uh, you have a brilliant concept here, and so it's not a money thing. It's going now. You've got you've got the the concept of the house, and so now there there are a lot of people that build houses and that are developers and have all of that and that's what they do they they do the implementation and the manifestation and the selling and all of that right and, and, and so it's not that you're looking for those are the type of people that that manifest and maybe they are the type of, yeah would would be looking for i mean i'm i'm just saying but i i think that 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 this is important, and why I thought it, it was important to to showcase the Haya project, um, and and uh, as part of uh, Exopolitics TV series on projects for a positive future, to show right. that these things are actually happening, and and uh, you know. Uh, because it's breakdown breakthrough, so this is on the breakthrough end of the curve, and and it may be that within six weeks you're going to meet someone, maybe in Mexico, who says, "Hombre, pues yo te puedo hacer tres casas." You want to do it? Yeah. Well, one of the biggest uh, things that have come out of the first few weeks of this campaign and this project is the community. There yeah. is a community building around this project already. There are people who are uh, committing time to help promote the campaign, but also the team members that you'll see in the campaign are sharing their ideas openly at the moment. 
because they also see the value in it. Uh, that's why people like Michael Tellinger have agreed to help, and yeah, all yeah. of these people are spread thin. No, 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 right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you are the entrepreneur and the visionary of this of this project, and so there are additional parties that that need to come in, and so uh, perhaps even in 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 Mexico there there are there are people there who can make this make this manifest. I'm sure there'll be some people coming out of the woodwork from this very interview. Yeah, yeah, be, 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 because I know that in Baja, there are communities of, of houses there, uh, and there are conventional houses. And these are for, for, for people who, who want an in, kind of an, an enhanced, an enhanced uh, living, an enhanced living situation uh, for themselves and move there. And so, may you know that? So this is just taking it and going a bit into I, a higher frequency. Oh yes, uh, one of our contributors, his name is Dave Stewart, who works with uh, 3D printing. Oh good. And uh, he's also with the Cobra movement. Um, he he gave me some interesting insight that in the past, protesting in the streets, you know the the Occupy movement and so forth was one way to get attention. But that same community of millions of people that have gone out to the streets in protest could take a little bit of money that they use for gasoline and food to go do their protests, but protest by funding and supporting free energy projects. The wealth that would come out of that for research would be phenomenal. Uh, and, and it would be another way to vote and have your say by putting into play five or ten dollars toward free energy research so that it, that it happens because we already know that the current charities of cancer and so forth who knows where that money is coming from i say that cancer research has actually caused more cancer statistically than solved anything so those billions of dollars going into these different charities how do we inspire that movement of people to support and adopt independent researchers in free energy and healing. Yeah, and a another model is that as human consciousness increases in frequency and expands, uh, then there there is more spontaneous cooperation and collaboration that comes out, and it's and it's out of that that your project manifests. Oh, yes, and it, it's not because of lack of money. Yeah. Now, uh, the, the next level with our campaign is to involve industry. Uh, we were uh, brainstorming some potential corporate partners that could help with this, and Home Depot was actually one of them uh, yeah. to be able to, because we're not looking for millions at the moment. We're not quite ready for that. Yeah. We are focused on that first example uh, that is the prototype yeah. uh, for this year, and I yeah. think it's very doable. We're talking about maybe four to six month project. Yeah, you see, be, because w one of the projects that I'm that I'm involved in now is on the reinvention of money, because money now is in some senses a six thousand year old or more uh, invention, and in other senses a three hundred year old invention, which is maladapted to current circumstances. Oh yeah, and, and, and so. To be seeking this 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 antiquated tool to implement these new concepts, there's there there's a maladaption there also. Right. So, so I, I just want to offer that and that. No, what you're, and we don't have the infrastructure. That, right. Right. Exactly. So you're you're seeking resources more than this antiquated tool that's called money. <laughs> and we definitely and, deserve yeah, a, and, a much more and your, instrument. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're seeking uh, synergy, resources, and fractal consciousness. As we put more of these projects in front of people, their brain starts recognizing what is possible. Just by the fact that we mentioned that we could design a, a healing home that runs on free energy and that can inspire individuals to explore a larger consciousness, just that example 
has filled a purpose. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm connected with that too. Yeah. Now, how can people get in touch with you? The, the best way, uh, if you are on Facebook, I'm very easy to find, Fernando Vosa. Also, uh, the Haya campaign has my contact information. My direct email is Vosa Media, all one word, at gmail.com. But please visit the Haya campaign, look for that site, and you'll get a lot, a lot of information. And where is the Haya campaign located? It's hosted on Indiegogo.com. And all you have to do is search Haya, H-A-I-A-H. Well, look, I, I, I have really uh, 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 enjoyed, and we, we have really en enjoyed being with you and, and have you lead us through this journey <laughs> to today. <laughs> and, and we really, uh, hi, you know, I, we were, your, your screen was frozen and I just wanted to bring you back so okay. that people would have uh, a glance at you and know that uh, th that didn't happened. Teleport. Yeah, that you didn't uh, teleport. Yeah. And that was just due to some unknown uh, intrusion which which happened. So do you have any any final words for our for our viewing yes, audience? I I wanted to invite the viewing audience to share organizations, resources, or individuals that would be very interested in knowing about this project. I'm very open to suggestions at the moment, and we were just talking in the, in the background a little bit about the funding aspects of this project, that it, the crowdfunding may not necessarily be the right platform, but that doesn't mean that the world doesn't need to see this. Uh, and the, the other point that we had talked about is that this is the kind of project example that sparks people to see the possibilities and to take action. I'm designing this because I wanted to buy a new home, and the kind of home that's out there doesn't, doesn't fill the requirements of running on free energy or healing. So as with many visionaries and creators, decided that to create the solution. Good. Now, once again, give us your contact email okay my email is vosa media v-o-s-s-a-m-e-d-i-a at gmail.com also the higher campaign can be found on indiegogo.com and all you have to do is look up h-a-i-a-h higher people say i should be greeting people by saying higher higher <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, so the planet, the planet herself has asked people like us to make this available, free energy and healing in the very homes that we live in. Gaia, Haya. <laughs> Haya needs a Gaia. <laughs> Gaia, Haya. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Alfred. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.